first paper I'd like to show you is a very beautiful French paper. It's called Duchenne, Colombia is the type, and it's made by Moulin de la Roque. It's my favorite paper to paint with gouache. So if you look at the roughness of the paper, it's extremely three-dimensional. A bit too intense perhaps for watercolor. The granulation is kind of overpowered by the roughness of the paper itself. But when you paint with gouache, it's just beautiful. I mean, the color looks so velvety, so matte. It has a coarse texture that enhances the matteness of the paint. When it comes down to coloring pencils, this is not a good paper to draw with because it's very easy for this paper to get fluffy and get abraded by the pencils. As you draw and scratch, it destroys the surface. It's still a good paper for pastel. And you can see here that you can get really expressive textures. And also, if you're doing classical drawing with charcoal, you can get a nice gradient, which is not too rough. That's very surprising, considering this is the roughest paper that we have in this lesson. The back of the sheet is also very beautiful. If you paint on the back, I think watercolor looks astonishingly amazing. The gouache carries on being gorgeous. And the shading with charcoal was very easy to blur with the brush and it didn't create too much of a texture again. It's a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting this paper to be so good for detailed drawing in charcoal. When I say detail, I'm implying smooth gradients between light and shadow, not so much fine line. You can't really do fine lines with this paper. The back also didn't resist very well the scrubbing caused by drawing with pencils. This is one of the best papers in the world, 100% cotton, and it's internally sized. That gives it some extra resistance, and it's by far the roughest paper that we have in here. In Czech Republic, you've got a tradition of top quality papers, handmade, most of them, Velke Lossini is a factory that I was very honored to have visited. I went to see the castle. It's like a living museum. The company was created in 1496, so <laughs> it's over 500 years old. It survived everything, including medieval trials. So, for example, the owner's wife, she was burnt at the stake. Nowadays, it's a gorgeous Baroque building. It has a working mill and also a paper-making museum. It's a very, very strong paper. It's 60% cotton and 40% linen. Linen makes the paper way stiffer and stronger, more resistant to abrading than just pure cotton papers. Top quality, highly recommended. From Canada, you've got this paper from La Papeterie Saint-Armand. Very strong paper to draw, so it resists very well. The coloring pencils didn't destroy the surface of the paper at all. This mill uses cotton and flax, as well as hemp, jute and linen rags, coffee bean bags, cotton t-shirts, denim blue jeans and even shredded money. It's incredible what they use to produce this paper. It's one of the most alkaline papers that I've ever seen. Super resistant to aging because it fights back the acidic nature of polluted atmosphere. The pH is 7.5. So this is actually more than acid free. This is one of my absolute favorite papers in the world. Sold by Zecchi and it's made by an Italian company called New Craftsman Production. 100% cotton paper. It's not for drawing. This paper gets easily abraded with pencils. As you can see in the area where I used coloring pencils, it went fluffy. But look how wonderful the granulation of the watercolor in this surface. One of the most expressive surfaces I've seen for watercolors. It's also great for charcoal and pastel if you want a rough texture. When I try to smooth it with a brush, it very quickly became bitty. So I don't recommend this paper for classical drawing where you want very realistic shading. Definitely one of the best papers in the world for watercolor or for gouache paint as well. Fabriano is one of the oldest companies in the world. It dates back from the 13th century. I really loved this particular paper that Fabriano makes called Esportazione. 
It's extremely fast drying. It's 100% cotton, acid free, sized with gelatin. So it's a very resistant paper. Something that I've noticed straight away, it's extremely strong, perfect for charcoal, slightly slippery for coloring pencils, but nevertheless, they looked wonderful. Vibrant, very good texture as well. When it comes to watercolor, it's very pleasant. Nice granulation and flocculation happening with this mauve paint. The gouache, I thought it was not very remarkable for classical drawing is a little bit too rough so you see the grain showing through and that means you'll spend a lot of time dot picking literally filling in the gaps Fabriano also makes some astonishing papers that contain earth colors from the regions of Umbria and Siena Another paper made by Fabriano is called Roma it's a 100% cotton acid free paper Roma is the favorite paper for ateliers worldwide when they ask the students to draw highly rendered charcoal drawings. Personally, I disagree with that choice. This paper is extremely bitty, strange black dots all across the surface when I smudged the charcoal with a soft brush. And that implies a lot of time spent erasing those black dots in order to create a uniform shading. If you're spending money in art courses, it doesn't make sense to be paying to waste another two or three weeks just dot picking and trying to get a uniform texture. Dot picking is important, so you have to learn how to do it, but I don't think it's worth the hundreds of pounds that it will cost you, literally. I don't recommend this paper for highly rendered charcoal drawings. It's very easy to erase though, it's resilient, has got a texture and a grain to it. The watercolor is remarkable, the reticulation even creates lines, veins of white showing through the purple. I also think it looks great with gouache paint. The coloring pencils also took very well on this paper. A fantastic paper, I just don't think it's the best choice for realistic classical drawings. But a lot of artists use it for that purpose, so it seems to be quite popular. It's just my personal choice, I wouldn't. The Museum Moli Paperere de Capelladas is sitting in a beautiful 17th century mill, and it was founded in the 20th century. This is a living museum, and I really recommend you visit the building if you have a chance. You can actually see the papers being produced, handmade, in the cellar of the mill using the original tools and machinery. In terms of surface, this sample I have in here, it's a knot paper. It's in between rough and smooth. It's medium grain. 100% cotton linters and flax. So this is like one of the highest level of papers that you can make. Its neutral pH has got a very unique texture. I was quite surprised because it resembles the texture of canvas. It's almost like if you were drawing on a canvas for oil painting. But of course, it's paper, so this is not meant to be for oil painting. A wonderful paper in the sense that it's unique. It took charcoal quite well. I don't recommend it for classical rendered drawings because it's bitty. So you have all these black dots that you would have to erase. But if you want to use it for more expressionistic painting techniques and drawing, this is a great paper. Look at the texture of the charcoal when it's applied without smudging it. So it's good for pastels, it's good for charcoal. The coloring pencils also did quite well on this paper. The watercolor has got a grain that it's maybe an acquired taste. It's perhaps not my favorite texture, but it's certainly quite unique. It's almost like little squares. Reminds me a little bit of the texture of Canson Mitant paper, which is very popular and widely available. So maybe you, you know that paper as well. But this is a superior make. Uh, the gouache looks spectacular. This texture actually enhances the surface of the gouache and makes it much more lively. The Roscombe Mill sheet provides a rare opportunity to paint on a watercolor paper, which is laid, not wove. One of the papers they make is called Gertin's Broad Laid. It's a mix of cotton, flax and hemp. It's not white, it's kind of a very pale grey. 
It's internally sized, so it's resistant and it's pH neutral. It's very strong to draw, so you can definitely apply the coloring pencils without destroying the surface. In terms of granulation in watercolor, it created this interesting mottled effect where the paint seems to stay in blocks with gaps in between, quite unusual. When it comes down to gouache, I didn't think it was anything special though. Also by the Roscombe Mill, this printmaking paper called Margot made to be as dimensionally stable as possible. The tests have shown it to take over 20 screenings of oil-based inks without any problem. That's super remarkable. It's internally sized, very strong for pencils. It doesn't get fluffy or abraded. When it comes to shading, it's got a very nice fine tooth to the grain if you use charcoal, so you can blur it easily with a soft brush. In terms of gouache paint, I thought it looked quite good. The Roscombe also makes the David Cox drawing paper. It's a beige color. It's a mix between cotton, flax and reed. The granulation of the watercolor is just gorgeous. You really see the sedimentation in every little valley of the texture of the paper. When it comes down to gouache, it's okay, nothing special, but the coloring pencils really shine in here. The, the colors are vibrant, they stay on the surface, and this paper is so strong that you can draw without any fear of destroying the surface because of the addition of flax. Also by the Roscombe Mill, the Joshua Crystal paper. It's cotton and linen, acid-free, but surprisingly, maybe it doesn't have enough sizing on the surface for drawing. It's not really that strong when it comes down to coloring pencils. You don't really see it in the final result, but you feel it as you are drawing that somehow the surface of the paper is getting a little bit under attack. <laughs> the Roscombe Pastelless is a paper made for pastels. The texture is quite even. The granulation in watercolor was very uneven. So I'm not sure if I can recommend it for realist painting, but perhaps you can use it for contemporary art. The gouache looks pretty good. For classical drawing with charcoal, it's a little bit... I actually don't like the texture. I found this texture um, not very good for highly rendered realistic drawings with charcoal. But it's a beautiful texture for more expressionistic styles. Also by Roscombe, you've got Chateau Vellum. And this paper is strong. It's 100% linen, which is quite unusual. Linen is the best fiber to use. It's perhaps superior to cotton, although cotton runs at the second best close to linen. In terms of granulation of watercolor, uh, nothing to brag about. The coloring pencils did wonderful. Shading with the charcoal for highly rendered drawings was acceptable. When you use the charcoal just on the sides, I don't think it took a lot of charcoal. Still by the Roscombe Mill, you've got this special paper created to emulate the same papers that Turner has used from the 19th century. It's got a fine granite finish of blue and black. The fibers are mashed together. It's cotton and flax. The flax addition makes this paper extremely strong. The pencils did well. The shading with charcoal, nothing special, but when it comes to watercolor itself, it's very pleasant. It's kind of even, but still a little bit textured to give some interest. The gouache is beautiful. Turner's Blue, Turner Nocturne. The coloring pencils did marvelously and the colors are so vibrant. Dia Donné Paper Mill. And it's a not-for-profit, handmade paper studio in New York. Very unusual business, because they never really made a line of handmade paper. They are mostly a custom shop. So that means you can order papers according to your own tastes and your own likings. And they also have a workshop where you can create your own paper. In terms of the way it behaved, the watercolor, it has this unusual the way the paint stays together in certain areas and much thinner in other broad areas, that can be used to your advantage if you're producing abstract art or contemporary painting or just a very expressive, realist painting. Loose. The gouache is stunning. The texture is so velvety and so matte and it's not too smooth. It still has just a little bit of a grain that you can see. The coloring pencils also stayed beautifully on top of the surface. 
For classical drawing in charcoal, it's a little bit too bitty. I quite like the texture if you don't blend it. If you like a little bit of grain and roughness, this might be an interesting choice for you to try. Arche is a very famous French brand of watercolor papers, top quality. Although it's soft, it still resists a lot of scrubbing, scratching and erasing, which is very unusual. It's 100% cotton, air-dried, has got an infinity symbol on the watermark because this paper is buffered with calcium carbonate that makes it resistant to the acidity of the atmosphere. In terms of the granulation, it's one of my favorite papers to use. Again, you got this very interesting reticulation with lines of white showing through the mauve paint. The pencils did well. I don't think it's anything special for coloring pencil. The gouache is beautiful. Charcoal, it's an interesting grain. Although it's bitty and there's lots of dots, I still find this texture uh, beautiful. It's mottled. It reminds me a little bit of black and white photographs. When you use the pure charcoal, it doesn't really take a lot. That's the thing. So it's not a paper that creates super dense black drawings in one coat. You might have to fix it and then apply another coat on top. Still by Arche. You've got another paper called Moulin de Gué, Rive de Lain. This paper is 85% cotton and 15% linen. This paper is also buffered with calcium carbonate. Although it's bitty and very dotted for a highly rendered classical drawing, it's a beautiful grain. And it does remind me of the Ilford films for those who used to do black and white photographs back in the 90s. Ilford films were famous for the beauty of the texture of the grain, and I think this paper does justice to that. The coloring pencils did well. The watercolor was a little bit disappointing. I find this texture a little bit of a nah, nothing really is happening. The gouache, so-so. But for charcoal, I think this could be a very interesting choice to use. The roughness of the pure charcoal applied without smudging, uh, it's interesting, nothing special. So I would recommend this paper for smudged charcoal drawings or pastel, where you want to see a little bit of this texture showing through. Another French brand is called Lana. This special paper is called Gravure, so it's good for embossing in talio, lithography. It's 100% cotton, acid-free of course. The charcoal kept slipping, so it, it didn't really grab the charcoal that much. When I smudged it, it had a beautiful grain though, very fine grain. So this could be good for half realistic drawings, you know, almost realistic, but where you can still see the charcoal on the surface of the paper. It took the gouache beautifully well. It's very smooth and very matte, very even. Watercolor, it's okay, nothing to brag about, but for gouache, I think this is a great paper. The German brand, Bugra Buten. It's very strong. The surface resists very well the abrasion caused by pencils. But again, the charcoal uh, slipped away. It didn't really stick. When I tried to smudge it, it got easily very bitty. On the top, I wasn't able to achieve a pure black with charcoal. It just didn't fill up the grain of the paper. It's very slippery for charcoal. Coloring pencils were spectacular on this paper. It's one of the best papers for coloring pencils with a very pleasant grain as well, if you like texture. It also took the gouache pretty well. And watercolor, it seems to have granulated, but I can't really tell you if it's recommended for watercolor. This paper is acid-free, but it's made with 100% high alpha cellulose. It's a very pure type of cellulose, about 93% pure but it's still considered not as good as pure cotton or pure linen. Another German make, Zerkal. This paper I have in here is the smoothest paper that I've tried in the whole book. This is by far the smoothest paper. It's actually, in order to produce such a smooth paper, the factory almost had to rebuild the calendar rolls. <laughs> This paper allows the finest detail to be printed. Great for engraving, printmaking, embossing, intaglio. 
but I used it for watercolor and look at the spectacular effects that this paper created. Random veins of white showing through the watercolor. It's because the surface is so smooth, the water doesn't know where to go to. Not good for charcoal. It just doesn't take any charcoal. This is the blackest I could do with a charcoal stick. When I smudged it with a brush, there is a lot of rough texture in there for such a smooth paper. And it's not good for pencils either. The, the pencils felt very scratchy. There is no density of pigment, but for watercolor and for gouache, ooh la la, this is one of the best papers you can use if you want something really special. The gouache just dried absolutely flat. If you want to do a painting that is more like graphic design in terms of look, sharp edges, fine detail, this is the paper to go to. It's also great for miniaturists. If you want to use super small brushes and paint tiny, tiny, tiny details, this paper will allow you to reproduce the detail just as you want it. Still by Zerkal, you've got the heavy printing paper. This paper felt, again, very slippery for charcoal. And if you smudged it, it's a bit bitty. And again, you don't get really dense blacks. The coloring pencils did well and the colors look vibrant. The watercolor, nothing special, but the gouache looked beautiful too. So this is a great paper for gouache. In terms of composition, this paper is acid free, internally sized with starch and surface sized with aquapel. The fibers are cotton and high alpha cellulose. This paper by the Italian company Fabriano, it's called Fabriano Artistico. This one is hot pressed, which means it's smooth. Hot pressed means exactly that, means that the paper has been compressed under heat or with a lot of pressure. The watercolor behaved very beautifully. It's kind of even, but not really. So there's kind of an ondulation to the surface of the color. It's almost like looking to the surface of the water, the surface of the sea. You've got all these ups and downs created by the way the pigment decided to move. The gouache also looks great, very velvety. The coloring pencils did well. The charcoal, not really. I don't recommend this paper for charcoal drawing. I don't think it's anything special. It just doesn't take enough charcoal. The very same type of paper, Fabriano Artistico, but this time it's the rough surface. So this has not been hot pressed. The watercolor behaves very differently in here. You've got really strong veins and granulation in different parts of the image. The gouache is not as even as with the hot pressed that we saw before. The coloring pencils did really well. There's a beautiful slide and gliding of the pencil. But the charcoal, again, I think it's a little bit of a disaster. I don't really like this texture for charcoal. These papers are 100% cotton and surface sized. The rough paper is particularly resilient, so you can erase and scrub without destroying the surface of the paper. This English paper is made by St. Cuthbert's Mill and it's called Saunders Waterford. This is the finest paper that St. Cuthbert's Mill makes. It's one of my favorite papers. I use it quite a lot for watercolor and gouache. It's internally sized with gelatin and also on the surface. So that means it's very resistant to lift when removing masking materials. It's receptive to multiple watercolor washes. So you can apply color upon color without destroying the surface of the paper. And it will not feather when you use pen and ink. It's also very good for erasing pencil or charcoal. In terms of granulation of watercolor, it's pleasant and subdued. The one I have in here is a knot surface. Knot means that it's not hot pressed, but it's not rough either. <laughs> so the term knot is a paper that is in between. It's medium grain. It's 100% cotton. The charcoal, I don't think it's very interesting on this paper, but I do recommend it for water-based media, watercolor, gouache, acrylics, and so on. Also by the same manufacturer, St. Cuthbert's Mill, you've got the Somerset range. It's a very famous paper. The Somerset range is extremely alkaline. The pH is 8.5. That's spectacular. It means the durability and its life are unaffected by atmospheric acidity. 
I've got the black one to show you in here. It's got one of the most gorgeous grains for coloring pencils. It's a beautiful texture. It almost creates a 3D effect when you create these gradients between dark and light. The gouache also looks very good with just about enough grain to make the paint interesting. I can't tell you much about the watercolor though because it's see-through so the black is hiding the effect. This paper is archival so it shouldn't fade at all. Although it's dyed black it should be light fast. And the pencils leave a lot of color so that means it's difficult to create super super faint marks, almost invisible lines. This paper is more for a bold approach with coloring pencils or with gouache. This paper it's called Cotman and it's made by Windsor Newton, another British company. It's sized both internally and externally and acid free and wood free. Wood free means that it's made from wood fibers but has been purified so that the cellulose is very pure and doesn't contain any sort of lignin or rosin that would destroy the paper long term. So this should be a resistant paper in terms of durability. It's also good for scrubbing. It's a strong paper, you can do a lot with it. This one is a not surface, it's not hot pressed and it's not rough, it's in between. <laughs> This paper is recommended by the Royal Institute of Painters in watercolors. The granulation is really beautiful. I found it very expressive. I didn't like the effect on coloring pencils. I find this texture a little bit um, rough in the sense that it's not nice. It's just a little bit too simple and too basic. Charcoal created a nice cloud of gray, but I don't think this is my favorite paper for charcoal. But for watercolor, I highly recommend it. This paper here is Dutch. It's called Simili Japan. And it's meant to imitate Japanese papers, but it's made in Europe, in the Netherlands. It's internally sized with aquapel, surface sized with starch, a resistant paper. It's also acid free. This paper didn't work well at all with watercolor. It buckled so badly that the watercolor ran to both extremes of the paper. But for gouache, marvelous. One of my favorite papers to use for gouache paint. It's too slippery for charcoal, so you can't really do much with it. And when it comes down to coloring pencils, the effect is pleasant in the sense that the grain looks almost blurred. If you're looking for a very hazy, ethereal type of drawing with coloring pencils, this could be an interesting paper to try. And definitely for gouache. This American brand called Stonehenge. It's 100% cotton. And I found that the pencils did really well. The charcoal did okay. The watercolor, it's interesting. I can't say I dislike it. And the gouache is okay. So essentially, Stone Age 100% cotton paper. It's a good paper, but it's not handmade. It's, it's more like factory produced. So it's cheaper than those very expensive handmade cotton papers that I've shown you before. It's a good paper for students and also for artists, but not my favorite so far. This one is smooth and this one is a rough type of paper also made by Stonehenge but it's for watercolor. It's called Stonehenge Aqua. It's also 100% cotton. I really like the surface, how the watercolor ended up looking. When I first tested it with coloring pencils I thought oh this is too mechanical kind of too repetitive, the texture of the paper. I didn't like it for pencils for that reason. But when I painted in watercolors, I was happily surprised with the beauty of the grain. The gouache also looks quite interesting. So it's a great paper for watercolor, I find. When it comes down to charcoal, I really do not recommend this paper at all for realistic drawing. As you can see, it has a lot of black dots in between the shading. This was just smudged again with a soft brush. You would have a lot of work to do erasing all of that to get an even surface. This special paper for pastels is abrasive. It behaves like a sandpaper. It's literally like sandpaper. 
but it's archival, acid-free, so it will last much longer than if you just draw with pastels on normal stand sandpaper, which I don't recommend at all. But this paper is one of my favorites in the whole world for that. The coating of the surface is totally even. So from left to right, top to bottom, you get a super uniform type of texture. This is produced by computerized electrostatic coating. It's super high technology. The coloring pencils did quite well. I, actually, it's very easy to, to just get rid of the whole pencil because the abrasive surface is going to take a lot from the lead. But you get these dense, rich colors. The watercolor was spectacular. You have these random ramifications that just pop in here and there and wherever the paper wanted it to happen. Not you, the paper. The gouache, very, very special. I don't think you can see it on camera, but it's super, super velvety. Last but not least, this is amazing. It was so easy to blur everything. The charcoal was super, super easy to spread with a soft brush. This is my choice of paper if you want super highly realistic transitions and soft blendings between light and shadow without seeing the texture. UART Grain 800, which is fine, but I also make a rougher one. For example, this is Grain 240, so they have different types of grains, rougher, medium, and very fine. The granulation in watercolor is super expressive. It almost creates pointillism, so you almost have dots of purple with white around them. The gouache also looks good, although I find that grain 800 was more interesting to look at and somehow looks more vibrant. The coloring pencil, it's a bit rough and that can be interesting if you want to draw with coloring pencils but give the look of pastels because it's going to look just as rough as a pastel drawing. This paper is perfect for pastels and charcoal and I wanted to say that when I smudged it with the brush, it was perfectly even. But unfortunately, when I fixed this sample, the fixative created lots of dots, but that was absolutely my fault. It's not the paper's fault. Although this paper is quite rough, it's grain 240, super abrasive, like rough sandpaper. It was very easy to produce even shadings with charcoal. Art Spectrum is an Australian brand. This is also one of my favorite papers in the world for charcoal and for pastels. Wonderful surface. It perhaps takes a little bit more layers than the UART paper I've shown you before. When it comes to coloring pencils, it looks like chalk. So you get again this texture that looks like pastel. You know, it doesn't look like coloring pencil at all. This paper is light fast, acid free, painted with a primer called Color Fix, which you can also buy separately. In terms of the gouache paint, it's an interesting paper. I would still select the UART 800. When it comes down to watercolor, I can't tell you. The color ended up in this little pool. So it's a paper to be tried more. Perhaps uh, I'll be able to give you some more information in the future. The Royal Sovereign Pastel card contains cork, cork fibers, and that's what gives it its abrasive quality. So it takes very well charcoal, pastels, coloring pencils. Coloring pencils also behave like pastels in here. Look at the roughness and the granulation that you get. The gouache looks very beautiful. It's again very matte and velvety with just enough tooth in the cork bits to give it a, a very natural look so it doesn't look too pristine. It's made by the same factory as another brand called La Carte Pastel Boards, which is made by Senelier, and I'm about to show it to you next. So the La Carte Pastel Boards by Senelier, it's acid-free, it's super absorbent. When you paint, uh, the paint immediately sips in, it bleeds as well. The paint doesn't stay where you have intended initially. It also contains a cork surface. It produces super smooth blending in charcoal. So this could be a great paper for realistic drawings in charcoal. And the pencils in here, they don't look exactly like pastel. It's slightly of a finer grain. It's similar to the one by the Royal Sovereign pastel cards. So I can't explain 
why one behaved like pastels as the other still looks like coloring pencils. Just like Senilier, there's also another French brand called Clairefontaine, and this one is called Pastel Mat, this type of paper that Clairefontaine produces. It's, as the name says, for pastels. Again, super absorbent, so the paint dried almost immediately. When I painted with gouache, if you're in a rush, this is a good paper to use. The paint will dry super fast. In terms of the granulation of the watercolor, you can see a very gentle mottled effect, although it's, it's very subtle. It's almost a flat wash as a result. And the pencils look blurry. So this could be a great paper if you want a hazy effect in coloring pencils. With charcoal, it was very easy to produce a smooth transition. So this could be also great for drawings in the style of the 19th century, like Atelier system drawings. The multimedia art board, it's very unique in the sense that it's not really paper, or at least the paper has been heavily treated. I can't tell you the composition, I couldn't find it anywhere but it also takes oils, which is something that I would never say that you should do uh, with paper. So this isn't exactly paper. The problem with the multimedia art boards is that the surface is so rigid that it cracks. It actually splintered just when I was trying to cut it with a pair of scissors. It's very lightweight and portable, and the advantages are that it doesn't warp and it's dimensionally stable. But definitely frame it because it can easily crack if you accidentally bend it. Strathmore produces a range called 500, and in this case, it's specifically for charcoal. From what I can see in here, I, I've never used this paper for a complete piece, but from what I can see in here, it's very easy to blend with a soft brush, and it creates a very fine, smooth gradient, but you still see little dots like a medium grained black and white negative film. Again, for those who did photography back in the 90s, you probably know what I mean. So it reminds me of um, maybe a 400 ASA film. It's a nice texture, not super smooth, but not rough either. It's somewhere in between. The gouache, I don't think it looks anything special on this paper and neither the watercolor. The coloring pencils did well. It's got a nice grain, it's kind, has got these lines that cut through the surface of the paper and that kind of shows when you use coloring pencil. Rose Combi produces special paper for pastels. It's a wove paper, not laid, and it's light fast because it contains pigments. If you leave this paper with some sort of sunlight, it's not going to fade as quickly as some of the other papers from different companies because they're not using dyes they're actually using pigments in order to color the paper and pigments are much more stable than dyes, generally speaking. The gouache looks great. It's smooth, but at the same time it's rough. I can't really explain it. It's smooth, but there's a certain mottled surface. I can't tell you about watercolor. It's a colored paper, so watercolor doesn't really show in here. And when it comes down to coloring pencils, it's got a rough grain. Your pencils will create, again, an effect more similar to wax crayons or soft pastels. The charcoal was very easy to spread evenly with a soft brush. Another great paper that behaves almost like sandpaper. It's called Tim Fisher Art Paper. It's very abrasive. It's difficult to actually make very faint lines with coloring pencils. So again, this is great for a bold technique, rough textured. It's pH neutral, so this paper shouldn't yellow over the years. It's already yellow by nature, but it shouldn't change after that. This paper is super absorbent. So when you paint with gouache, it dries straight away. It also bleeds. So it's not really for sharp watercolors, but fantastic for different mediums. I really like how the gouache sits in here and also the coloring pencils. When it comes down to smudging with the charcoal, I couldn't really get such even results as with the UART 800, for example. The UART was much more even. This one is a bit bitty and grainy, but again, if that's what you're looking for, then this could be the paper for you.
Strathmore 500 series, which is pure cotton archival, a premium paper, a Bristol type of card. Bristol are those super smooth papers, good for illustration and ink drawing with a pen where you want sharpness and definition. Arguably, this is the only Bristol card that I recommend from all the Bristol cards I've tried so far because it's 100% cotton. So this paper is archival. It's not going to yellow or age or rot like some of the other Bristol cards that are so acidic that they're not going to last many decades. When it comes down to watercolor, it's okay. It's very even, smooth, nothing special. I don't think it really has a personality. But the gouache sits beautifully. It's very even, smooth looking. If you want the smoothest texture, buy the plate surface. They do two surfaces and the plate is the smoothest one. When it comes down to charcoal though, I was quite disappointed. It just doesn't stick and it's surprisingly grainy. For such a smooth paper, it actually created a very coarse rough texture. The coloring pencils, I felt they were slightly slippery, but they still did well. But you can't really fill up with a very dense layer of pigment. Another British make, John Purcell paper, JPP. They're based in London and they produce many types of paper. This one is called South Bank. It's acid free and it's buffered with calcium carbonate. So it stays acid free for a longer period of time, for many centuries to come. When it comes down to its performance, although the paper buckled, and you can see that because the watercolor ran to the edge, the granulation is really beautiful. Again, it's unexpected, it's a bit chaotic, you can't control it. It creates this grain that can really enliven your paintings. One of the most gorgeous surfaces I've ever used for gouache. Highly, highly, highly recommended for gouache paint. Not for coloring pencils and definitely not for charcoal. This paper just doesn't do it. You can't get dense black lines in charcoal. And when you smudge it with a brush, it's actually quite textured, although it's a smooth paper. You've got these paradoxes sometimes. This paper is also made by the Italian company Fabriano. It's called Disegno and it's for drawing. It's acid free, 100% recycled. The texture on the watercolor was interesting, but nothing special. I really didn't like this for gouache. It just doesn't seem to take the paint very well, but it's great for coloring pencils. Super expressive texture. I really like the granulation that you get with a pencil because it's not mechanical at all. It's very erratic. That means you don't get those really annoying geometric patterns that sometimes you find on cheaper papers. This is a good paper to draw with pencil or coloring pencil and even for charcoal. Although it's not wow, it was relatively easy to blend with the brush. There's a little bit of dot picking to do in the future, you know, to fill up those grains of white and then with the tip of the rubber erase one or two black dots. Quite remarkable for what it is. Also by the American company Stonehenge, you have this 100% cotton, extremely light fast black paper. Beautiful fine grain for coloring pencils and the colors sit on top. It's like the blue is so vibrant, the red is opaque and the white too. It did extremely well with gouache, has got a very nice surface to work on. This is not the paper for watercolor because it's black but highly recommended for gouache paints or for coloring pencils. And because it's light fast, that's like unique. Most companies don't do light fast black papers. They tend to fade quite badly. But Stonehenge, thankfully for us, did a super light fast black paper. One of my favorite brands of papers for pastel drawing and for coloring pencil is made by Claire Fontaine. It's called Angre. Angre is a type of paper. There's many companies doing Angre paper, but Claire Fontaine, in my opinion, makes one of the finest. The paper itself is a delight to look at. Uh, the sheets are very beautiful and usually they have a mottled look where you see little fibers of different colors woven together. Nevertheless, it's too slippery for charcoal. I couldn't really fill in the grain very well. I couldn't get a dense black. And when I smudged it, I like the effect. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's not fine enough for atelier classical drawing of the human body where you want those transitions to be just perfect. 
one of my favorite papers for gouache because the texture of the paper, all Angra's papers, they have these kind of lines across the surface. The gouache gets enlivened by this mottled linear effect that permeates the whole painting. It's not a paper for watercolor because it's colored, but it still took watercolor very well without buckling too much. This is not paper, although it's made for fine arts. These are specially made sheets of polypropylene that are meant to take paint, pencil and ink. Because it's polypropylene, it should age better than paper, at least theoretically. It shouldn't be sensitive to humidity, to insects, to fungi and so on. This one is the translucent type, so it's see-through. This is the only translucent paper I recommend in the whole market because it's not going to yellow in time. Most of the other papers will turn brown very quickly and they will also crack and eventually rip because of the acid content. This is polypropylene, so it's not going to do that. It's going to stay forever pretty much like this. But I don't really recommend these papers for painting or drawing. And the reason being that although it created a wonderful wash of watercolor, totally even, this would have been pretty much impossible to do with the standard paper and by using such a granulating pigment like I did. This purple is super granulating and yet it dried even. The problem is that if you scratch it with your nail, the paint comes off. So I don't really believe that the bond between paint and polypropylene is archival. My suspicion is that everything will start flaking off in a few decades. No for me. When it comes down to the gouache, I was expecting this to be the smoothest surface to work on. Actually, it's not. The result is super rough. The gouache doesn't grip properly to the plastic. After the first layer dried, I tried to give it a second layer to see if I could improve it, and I couldn't, because the second layer started removing that very first layer. So if you want to do art which is not meant to last, like art projects, graphic design or illustration, this is a fantastic and unique surface to work on. But for fine art, I can't recommend this type of plastic surfaces to paint. The same company, Yupo, they also make a heavy type of polypropylene paper, and this one is white, so it's not translucent. In here, the watercolor reticulated, so you see the granulation, very different to the even result we got before in the translucent type of surface. But again, it's going to come off if you scratch it. I don't think the pencils did that well on this paper. I actually prefer much more using coloring pencils on the translucent paper. It takes pencil much better. This one is a bit slippery and I just couldn't manage to get a rich red or blue or black. It's a disaster for charcoal, of course. It's not going to take any charcoal at all. This is the best that I could do doesn't work for gouache because the paint just keeps slipping off the surface of the plastic. The French brand Lana, they also do a polypropylene surface which is called Lana Vanguard. It's very similar to Yupo. I got again a very even effect with watercolor but the paint is already flaking off and I didn't do anything to it. As soon as I close the book and open it again, more bits of paint just scratch off. A disaster for gouache, same reason, it just doesn't stick. And this was by far the worst when it comes down to drawing. Look how faint the coloring pencils became. I just couldn't get any more color onto the paper. Totally forget it about charcoal. I bet you can hardly see. <laughs> so uh, no, 